videos, I've been deriving the energy balance equations that are on table 8.1 or 8-1 in this book. This is the Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering by Fogler, and I have the fourth edition. And this table starts on page 476. So this is basically your energy balances for if you have an adiabatic reactor, if you have a CST, I haven't done the CSTR heat exchange yet, but I've done the PFR, PBR with heat exchange, and I've done that in terms of conversion and molar flow rates, and also for multiple reactions. And then also I, in the last video, I showed you how to derive equation seven, which was if you had a variable temperature in your coolant jacket. So in this video, I wanted to show you how these equations are actually applied in your design problems. And this, uh, I'm gonna show you for both, uh, uh, if you are working in terms of conversion or if you're working in terms of molar flow rates. And this is the, this is in the book. So this is on page 502 and it's table 8-3 and it's called PFR PBR algorithm for heat effects. So I recommend going and looking at that. So heat effects in PFR PBR so let's assume that you have the following reactions. So you have A plus B to 2C, and it's reversible. And then I want to I want to show you how you do this for both conversion and molar flow rate. And I wanted to put the I wanted to kind of do two columns and write them side by side to kind of compare the difference. So this first one is conversion, and the second one is molar flow rate. So the first thing you're going to do is a mole balance. So mole balance, and so the mole balance for a uh, PFR in terms of conversion is dx dv is equal to minus ra over fa naught. And for molar flow rate, you write your equation. If you remember, you write your equation for each reactant. So for this, you would have d fa dv is equal to ra d fb dv is equal to rb d fc dv is equal to rc and this form has if you have multiple reactions this is the form you have to use if you don't have multiple reactions you can use you can work in terms of conversion so then the next step is and i'm going to just rewrite this table, so conversion, molar flow rate. So then the next step is your rate law. I also write the rate law for that. And so you have a reversible, I mean with this you would need to you would need more information to actually write the rate law, but I'm assuming it's elementary. So minus RA is equal to K1 CA CB minus CC squared over KC. And then since your temperature changes in the reactor, you need to write equations for terms. You need to write the equations for K1 and, and Kc because they're going to be changing down the length of the reactor and so that means your rate is changing so K1 is equal to whatever K at T is 
This is the T naught multiplied by the exponent, or actually whatever K is known at, not T naught. This is whatever temperature your K is known at. So if you got this off a table or something. So this is E over R, 1 over T, 1, minus 1 over T. And then KC is equal to KC at whatever temperature, multiplied by the exponent of the heat of reaction over R, and this is 1 over T I'm going to say this is KC1 1 over T1 minus 1 over T and then these are the same for if you're working in terms of molar flow rate the rate laws are the same for both conversion and molar flow rate. So, so far the only thing that's really changed is the mole balance. So the next thing you're going to do is the stoichiometry. And first of all we're assuming this is gas phase with no pressure drop. So CA is equal to CA naught 1 minus X T naught over T. CB is equal to CA naught theta B minus X T naught over T. And C of C is equal to 2 CA naught X T naught over T. And then I just wanted to point this out real quick. If you were working in liquid, these wouldn't be multiplied by the T naught over T at this stage. So the reason why this is the case is because we're working in gas. So the so then the main difference, the stoichiometry for the molar flow rate, you need to First of all, you need to, since you're, these are written in terms of conversion, and we want them written in terms of the molar flow rate. So for the molar flow rate, this, this would be CA is equal to CT naught FA over FT, T naught over T. CB is equal to CT naught FB over FT, T naught over T, and C sub C is equal to C T naught F C over F T, T naught over T. And then we also need an equation for R B and R C. So I guess the the rate law it, I so I guess I was slightly wrong to say that these are exactly the same, but you, I mean, you, you don't need to really derive any more rate laws, but you need to write what these are. So let, what RB and RC are in re respect to A. So in this case, RB is equal to RA, and RC is equal to minus 2 RA. And you should understand how we got these. If not, definitely review this. I'm pretty sure this was in chapter three. So now we need to do an energy balance. So I'm just gonna write this again real quick. Conversion, molar flow rate, and so energy balance so this is where we can go look at this table so 
is the table in this book that I've been deriving the equations for 8-1. And so we have a PFR and we have a heat exchange. So we need to go find the equation that says it's for a PFR with heat exchange. So I'm going to write the equation how it is in the book and then I'll show you how the different parts are expanded for the problem. So this would be dt dv and this is equation 3b on this table 8-1. So this is u a t a minus t plus r a the heat of reaction, and this is over Fa naught, the sum theta I Cp plus delta Cpx. And I kind of ran over into the molar flow rate column. These are actually going to be different. So, and I mean, it should be pretty obvious that you need a different equation for the molar flow rate because this one is written in terms of conversion, and the one that you want to use for the molar flow rate isn't. So, I'll just write that one right now, too. So, you're going to use the equation for multiple reactions in a PFR because it's in terms of the molar flow rate. So, that's number six. So the equation you need for molar flow rate is dt dv is equal to u a t a minus t plus r i j the heat of reaction i j and this is over the sum of f i CPI. So in this case we are able to just pull the equations off that table for the energy balance, but just make sure that for when you're solving your problems, if you pull equations off that table, just make sure that there is not an assumption being made in that equation that doesn't apply. So for instance, if this had work, then we wouldn't be able to just use these because they don't account. They're assuming that the work is negligible. So just keep stuff like that in mind. So to expand this equation we for our particular reaction, this would be dt dv u a t a minus t plus minus r a multiplied by negative heat of reaction, and this is all divided by Fa naught, and then we have the sum of theta I Cp, this should be Cpi, so this would be Cpa, because theta A is 1, plus theta B Cpb, and then we know that theta C is 0, so there's, this would just be 0 multiplied by CPC, and then plus delta C sub P X. And then for this one, we have DT DV is equal to UA TA minus T. Whoops. And then this is going to be minus Ra multiplied by heat of reaction, because we only have one reaction here, so if you had multiple reactions, this would be for each reaction. So, and then this would be Fa Cpa plus Fb Cpb, 
plus F C C P C. So then the last step is if you ha if your temperature is changing in your heating or cooling jacket, like if the temperature in the jacket is changing down the length of the jacket, and just remember if you have a really fast flow rate, you can probably assume that it's not changing, so then you wouldn't need this last equation, but I'm going to write it just so that you can see how it would be applied if you needed it. So this last one would be coolant, and this is DTA DB is equal to UA T minus TA over M C C sub PC. And this is assuming, that one is assuming you have co-current flow. So if you had counter-current flow, you would use a different one. And then this equation is the same for both of these. And that equation is on table 8-1, and it's number 7. So anyway, then you would just solve all of these equations numerically. And so assuming you had everything, you so for the conversion, you would have this differential equation. You would have this differential equation and this differential equation. And so you would have three differential equations that you would solve simultaneously and either using MATLAB or polymath. And then if you were looking at molar flow rates, then or working in terms of molar flow rates, then you would all you would have these three differential equations. So that's three, and then you would have this one for the your energy balance, and then if you had the temperature changing in your coolant, then you would also have this one. So you would have five differential equations that you would solve simultaneously.